the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is a Cube Conversation. I'm coming to you from our Boston area studio. Happy to welcome to the program Angela Medina. She is the Director of Product Marketing at Thousand Eyes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Stu. All right, so Angelique, uh, we get to dig into some, some research, a, a new report, it's, a, it's, it's set up to be annual, uh, the 2020 Internet Performance Report. Uh, of course, Internet, like everything else in 2020, uh, things are a little bit different, so help us understand a little bit uh, the, the purpose of the, this report and what led to its inaugural uh, incarnation. Yeah, absolutely. So it's really interesting. So about the March period when suddenly there were shutdowns uh, in the US and other regions and a lot of the workforce was working from home, we started to get a lot of inbounds from um, our customers and other interested parties about how the internet was holding up. So, you know, was there a systemic network degradation? You know, are the operators able to handle all of this traffic and this, you know, pretty significant traffic shifts? So in responding to this, we decided to put out or make public um, our outage detection capabilities. So we put out an outage hub, and this was back in May, and it basically shows ongoing and recent disruptions. So that's kind of overlaid on a map and you can see where outages are taking place and uh, which networks they're taking place in. Um, so, so that's been out for a few months, but we wanted to look at not just outages in real time, but historically as well. So, you know, in, in looking at the last few months from January through the end of June, that's a really interesting time capsule because we can look at how networks perform and behave, not just um, under normal conditions, so maybe January and February, but also highly abnormal conditions. So it's a very interesting way to understand how do different types of network operators perform, you know, given you know, what we're enduring right now. Yeah, it, it's fascinating to me. If you've watched the networking industry, Angelique, you know, normally these kind of changes in networking are things that we measure in years, if not a decade. Uh, you know, <laughs> right. I, I remember it felt, it felt like it was at least 10 years we talked about the mega trend of, you know, north-south to going east-west, how virtualization was changing everything. And of course, in 2020, it's all of a sudden, all right, everybody work from home. Right. Everybody's home internet is going to be stressed. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, help us understand a little bit, you know, how much of that is, you know, a, 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 a blip that we saw over a very short period of time and, and, and what, what, what the resulting uh, output is. Yeah, it was really interesting because beginning in, I mean, there are always a certain level of disruptions. Disruptions are just a part of operating a network. Occasionally, you're going to have a little bit of uh, downtime stuff breaks. But in March, we saw a pretty dramatic spike, particularly in North America and Asia Pac. You know, the level of disruptions, the duration of the disruptions, and the scope of them, so more infrastructure impacted, was pretty significant. So something like a 66% increase globally. And this did start to go down uh, in subsequent months. So we're at a point where it's not quite back to January, February uh, baseline, but it's pretty close. So we definitely saw an increase, but it seems to have stabilized as in a lot of areas, traffic has plateaued or kind of normalized. And when you talk about the internet, of course, the internet is made up of lots of devices and lots of companies. Yeah. What particularly is interesting there? You know, if you look at uh, you know some of the internet service providers out there, if you look at companies that are doing uh, you know remote contact centers, uh, are you able to see kind of a, a heat map or some of the areas that might have been under more stresses and strain? Yeah, absolutely. So we're looking at it not only from a geographic standpoint, but we're also looking at different network types. So we're we're defining the internet fairly broadly, not to just be connectivity as a service providers, like your broadband providers or your transit providers, but also cloud networks. Cloud networks these days are really an extension of the internet. So we're also looking at their performance and how, how they held up, as well as the networks of really key services like CDN providers, content delivery network providers, as well as DNS. Um, so the, the collection of these networks is really kind of what is the foundation of what most people think of as the internet? 
Yeah, it, it's, it's the thing that we've been saying for a number of years is if traditionally you were somebody that managed the network, it used to be something that you would touch. And now, of right. course, most network operators, you are responsible for a lot of things that you don't necessarily touch. I, I, I'll give the, the disclaimer, of course, anybody watching, uh, Cisco has uh, made the announcement to acquire uh, Thousand Eyes, of course, you know, the, the you know, gorilla in the networking world. Uh, we look forward to talking about that more once the deal is completely closed. So, Angelique, how are the cloud providers doing? How are, you know, end customers, you know, re reliance on all of these various services, uh, how are things holding up? Yeah, I mean, you bring up a really good point about the fact that a lot of enterprises have dramatically transformed or in the process of transforming themselves where they're now so dependent on external services like cloud providers, like cloud provider networks, more internet service providers as opposed to managed services. So overall, um, you know, there's no, there hasn't been any kind of systemic breakage across all of these providers, but really the devil is in the details. Oftentimes you might have issues where um, there might be uh, sort of an increase in disruptions or you can't quite pinpoint where the source of an issue is. So really being able to see into these external services and understand how they're performing and have that visibility so you can communicate is really important if you're going to be successful um, operating in kind of this new IT reality. Um, but in terms of like how the different providers perform, cloud providers are vastly more reliable than internet service providers, probably for a number of reasons having to do with how they built their networks, you know, their software defined, um, they're not as dependent on the underlying infrastructure. So they have much newer networks too, less technical debt for sure. Um, anything specific when you look at the data over time, uh, you know, are we through kind of the biggest shift in what's happening and in, in more of the ripples now, or you know, have things settled out a little bit, I guess, since the, some of the initial shocks? Yeah, so it varies by provider and region. If just, you know, like um, think about the United States so or North America. So in North America, we definitely have seen that the number of disruptions have come down over the last couple of months. And we're at a point where we're really only about 20% off from what we were seeing in January and February. Um, but cloud provider disruptions are uh, haven't quite uh, return to earlier levels. So they're kind of still on the upswing. Um, so it will be interesting to see where that goes, if that continues or if that eventually starts to um, plateau and then decline. But uh, they're kind of they're kind of going in different directions in North America cloud disruptions are up, um, but ISP disruptions are down. All right, maybe could you explain a little bit, what does it mean by an outage? I, actually, I pull up yeah. right now the internet outage map, uh, which, yeah. which you have on your website, and it, there's these scary glowing red circles, but you and I are connecting from across the country, obviously using the internet yeah. to, to be able to do videos, so just because there's red glowing lights doesn't mean that uh, you know we don't have internet access. <laughs> Right, right. I mean, um, so so just in terms of what an outage is, um, an outage as we define it is where there is a 100% packet loss within a provider's network. So traffic is effectively terminating at an interface um, within the infrastructure of a provider. Um, and so when that happens, we'll flag it. And this is based, by the way, on billions of network probes that are sent out over the internet uh, using our platform each day. That's how we, uh, you know, effectively derive these measurements. And when we see these disruptions, you know, again, we'll flag them. And to your point, yes, uh, big glowing uh, outages on a, on a map. Um, but you know, you're right. Not all of them were necessarily going to be disruptive to users for a number of reasons. Um, one of the earlier points you brought up is that the internet is made up of thousands of independently operated networks. It's not like a utility, um, you know, so you may go through a provider that's having an issue and you may not, and that can change dynamically depending on where you're connecting to and what service you're trying to reach. It gets very so, yeah, so uh, I'm curious. One of the you know biggest challenges out there is that companies have to rapidly make changes, whether it is adopting cloud services or getting ready 
uh, remote call centers uh, or, or the like? Are, are there anything that they can take uh, from the this, this survey data or this maps as to how should I plan things? How should I make these changes? Uh, you know, what, what can practitioners learn from this? So I think it's important to understand how do operators, what are their habits and practices depending on where you're located? I mean, we've seen regional differences. So for example, in the US with internet service providers, they tend to have disruptions that are taking place outside of traditional business hours. So less disruptive, more likely to be due to a maintenance window change that they're making versus other regions where many more of these disruptions are taking place uh, at times that might impact a business. So understanding how different providers vary in terms of their practices gives you an opportunity to have that conversation with providers, to hold them accountable, and to work collaboratively with them so that you understand when are they gonna be making changes. If there are increases in traffic, maybe you, um, you have some resiliency measures in place because you know that they're, the operators might be um, a little bit stressed responding to these increases in either traffic or changing traffic patterns. All right, are, are there any other key takeaways that people should take fr from this uh, new report? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, one of the key things is that, you know, not every outage is created equal. Not all providers are created equal. Um, they can really do, I mean, they really do vary, whether it's the fact that the cloud providers have significantly fewer disruptions within their network. Um, some countries that we've seen have not really been impacted in terms of uh, traffic increases, while others have. It really can depend. And so the only way for you to know, you know how your provider is performing or how kind of the key services that you rely on are performing is to have visibility. Um, because these days, very often, you don't directly own or manage it. So the only way to ensure that you're getting performance that you need is to have um, insight. All right. Uh, in addition to the, the, the report that's coming out, uh, you've got a weekly series, I believe, uh, uh, that, that's sharing uh, data along with uh, one of our other CUBE alums, Archana. Uh, tell us a little bit about that, the kind of what you're doing there and, and how that differs. Yeah, so we do a weekly podcast. It's just about 15 minutes. It's just a check in to look at what's happened the previous week. So we put this out every Monday. And we're looking at, um, you know, whether there have been outages, any interesting uh, news that's taken place, and we'll often go and deep dive on um, disruptions that have happened. So last week, uh, you probably heard about the Cloudflare um, outage. It was, uh, you know, a pretty big deal. I was getting lots of uh, folks telling me, hey, the internet's down, and it was really just Cloudflare and their DNS service that wasn't available. So we go under the hood and kind of dissect what happened and and uh, you know how how it unfolded, and we can show a lot of interesting visualizations around that. All right, uh, one, one last thing. Going back to the report, uh, obviously you gather data. You look to be this year report. Anything along uh, gathering that data surprises that you found uh, found along this, or putting together the report? Are there certain things that longitudinally uh, you you might look to do in, in future studies? Yeah. So you know, I do think that maybe it would, wasn't as surprising to a lot of people, but it. It was surprising to us given this that you know looking at the same amount of data or same amount of infrastructure that cloud providers were just so dramatically um you know experienced so uh fewer outages isp is like 10 times uh, the number of outages as cloud providers i think going forward it would be interesting to incorporate um more uh, insight into last mile connectivity, because we're really focusing on backbone networks, really anything other than last mile. So, um, you know, in subsequent reports, we'll fold in some additional insight into last mile performance as well. Excellent. All right, Angelique, I'll let you have the final word, final takeaways you want people to have from, uh, you know, the, the, this internet performance report. You know, I think that the, you know, what you should take away is that if you're able to see how providers are performing, um, you really can influence how they operate and have a more productive um, experience working with them. Um, because you know, these days, 
they're really kind of foundational to most enterprises business. So it's really important to understand the differences between the cloud providers, as well as differences between um, internet service providers and how that works across different regions. All right, well, Angelique, thank you so much for sharing uh, the, the, the results of this. Definitely look forward to digging into the data and uh, hearing more from your, your weekly activities. Thanks for having me. All right, thank you so much for joining. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.